Hello and welcome to another item of Effective Java. Item 4 from Chapter 1 is about non-instantiability of classes. And what it says is uh, enforce non-instantiability with a private constructor. And we've already looked at private constructors in the previous items, the, the last three items, item 1, item 2, and item 3. And maybe this item should have been uh, the first item in this chapter. For example, when we talked about the static factory methods in item one, we said that when we want to provide a static factory methods like our value of etc., it's the best practice is to make the constructor private, which gives an, uh, a strong indication that the user is not supposed to directly instantiate this class and uh, the user or the client of the code is supposed to find other ways which typically is in the form of static factory methods similarly with builder we said that uh, um, with builder is also uh, it's a good practice to make the constructor of the class that we have a builder for private so that the users cannot directly um, uh, instantiate that class and they're supposed to be guided towards uh, using the using the builder class and with the singletons we said that it's it's an essential part of the singleton to prevent the users or the clients of the code uh, to uh, prevent them from instantiating and that comes with uh, making the constructor private and making a constructor private is not just about so it has obviously two benefits it completely locks the uh, the class from outside users from the clients of the code because uh, they cannot inherit from it and also they cannot uh, which means um, a user cannot extend a class if the class has a private constructor because it's baked into the java language that if a class is is extending or inheriting from another class the child class must always be able to call the constructor of the super class but a private constructor means no one is allowed to call it so there is no way that a class can subclass it and uh, and there is a difference here between having a private constructor and just declaring a class as final a final class means it cannot be extended right um, uh, but it can be instantiated which means it can have a public constructor right but a private constructor means the class cannot be extended nor instantiated and when you make a constructor private so if a class doesn't have any public constructor it's just private then the, there's really no need to explicitly mark it as final because nobody can inherit from it anyways right obviously you can also make a constructor protector which means it is still allows inheritance uh, but it's more like a package private or something like that so it's uh, only available to other classes in the same package or any child class even if it's in the um in another package so protected constructors also have their own use cases but i wanted to first of all highlight the subtle difference between a class being final and a class only having a private constructor so a final class can have a public constructor but uh, you cannot inherit from it because uh, the class is final but it can be instantiated um, for example a string class right you cannot subclass a string class because it's a final class all the wrapper types in java are final you cannot sub subclass them right and then um, and the wrapper classes for example in java in the jdk they they have public constructors so the people although they are final but they have public constructors which means they can be instantiated although it's not the best practice so i believe uh, they have deprecated all the um all the constructors all the public constructors in the wrapper classes uh, and they're deprecated for removal so let's head to eclipse and try to look at one of these wrapper classes so let's open up for example integer from java lang um uh, so integer uh, if you uh look at the uh, so it has a lot of uh, it has the value of these are the typical uh, 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 factory methods right we decide and these are the constructors and as you can the as you can see from java 9 they actually deprecated these constructors because uh, as i mentioned uh, as we mentioned in the item about uh, static factory methods when you provide a value of method 
usually that's the best practice to um, make the constructor private so you will still have access uh, to the constructor in your class right so so that you can implement uh, this value of these static factory methods but then uh, um, it's better to not provide a explicit constructor so make them protected or private private is the better practice and they have uh, marked uh, these were initially public and now they have been deprecated for removal and if you look at the deprecation it says it is really appropriate to use this constructor use the parse in so if you're passing a string it's better to use the parse in it's a static factory method to convert and the other one takes a primitive type integer and again uh, it says that don't use this it's better to use the static factory method value of right so let's back uh, go back to our powerpoints so private constructor means the class cannot be extended or instantiated every child class must call super class constructor and if you don't explicitly call it the, con the java compiler will always uh, put a call to the super as the first line in the constructor of the subclass so if the subclass if the constructor of the superclass is private nobody can call it so this call is not going to compile which results in not being able to inherit from a private a class that only has private constructor right so the call to the super is the first line in any constructor and uh, after the call to the super then uh, the java compiler java c copies all the instance initializers so we have two types of initializers a static initializers and instance initializers right copies all the code inside the instance initializer after the super call right inside the constructor and after that whatever code you write in the constructor is going to be executed so there are some stuff happens behind the scenes in the constructor of a child class and uh, you have to be aware of that so private constructor does not allow any other class to call it this is the meaning of private one of the access modifiers hence no inheritance is possible hence no instantiation is possible outside the scope of the class itself obviously if you are physically in the scope of the class you still can call the constructor right it private means it's only accessible via when you are physically inside the scope of the class now one of the obvious use cases of not providing uh, making all the constructors private is uh, utility classes right utility classes most often have private constructors right and uh, this uh, utility class uh, has a special meaning right I even in the jdk it means every uh, these classes don't have a state and they're not supposed to be instantiated because they don't have any state what the only thing that they offer are public field public static fields so they only have static fields and static methods right utility classes only have static methods and um, there are different there are several examples for example um java lang math and if you look at the outline every field inside this is uh, a static could be public for example e or pi or private static degrees to radians radians to degrees and all the methods inside the java lang math are public static everything is a static which means this class doesn't have any state and if a class doesn't have any state there is no point in instantiating an object of that class because the whole point of creating an object or an instance of a class is to be able to hold a unique state in that particular object but if the class doesn't allow to have any is not allowed to have to have any state there is no meaning in uh, in uh, uh, allowing it to be instantiated that's why you see in the math class there is a private constructor and there is actually a java doc don't let anyone instantiate this class and uh, the book the effective java it also says that when you make a constructor private always add a comment as to why this constructor is private here is just as we don't want anyone to instantiate this class so that's obvious right but sometimes um, uh, constructor is private maybe because of other reasons right maybe there is another public constructor that you want people to only use that one and this one the, the private one is only for your own use cases for the internal implementation so if you make a constructor private always give a comment as to why this constructor is private sometimes the reason is as simple as we don't we, we don't want anyone to instantiate this class or you there could be a reason like we don't want anyone to actually call this particular constructor we want users to call other constructors in the class if the class has other public constructors 
and uh, obviously uh, when you see a private constructor we, we know that uh, we can we can always access any private part of a class using java reflection so in order to guard against that uh, uh, right now this math class has a private constructor but people can access it reflectively you just uh, get the hold of the constructor meta class and then set accessible to true and then you can call it no problem but then uh, if you really want to prevent that you can throw an exception in the constructor right so the constructor can throw and uh, it's better to set it as a um, um, uh, basically a uh, runtime exception instead of compile time exception because compile time exception uh, doesn't make sense in this case because nobody's supposed to use the private constructor anyway so you can uh, throw an exception, runtime exception or runtime error, whatever, throw exception to prevent from reflective access to the constructor. So you can guard against uh, reflectively accessing a private constructor if that's what you desire, right? All right, so occasionally you'll want to write a class that is just a grouping of a static methods and a static fields. And again, this is called a utility class. And these are some important, uh, this is an important concept that you will see over and over again in any framework or inside the JDK itself. And utility classes are not supposed to be instantiated in the absence of ex explicit constructors. However, explicit constructor here, we mean public constructor. So the, the client of the API is able to access it. However, the compiler provides a public, a, a public parameters default constructor. This is the no arg default constructor. So, so if you don't explicitly provide a private constructor, so basically you don't provide any constructor in your class. Um, obviously, uh, some people might think, okay, if there is con no constructor here, so nobody can actually create an instance of this class because it doesn't have any constructor, but that's not true. If you don't declare any explicit constructor, the compiler, the Java C, will put a public no arg default constructor in that, uh, um, in that uh, uh, class. And that's not what you want because that default constructor is public, so anyone can access it, so, which means anyone can call it and create an instance of that class, which is not what you want. So you provide a no arg default constructor, but you mark it as private. It is not uncommon to see unintentionally instantiable classes in published API. And again, that's because of this mistake that some people make, that if I don't provide any constructor in my class, it means uh, nobody can uh, instantiate, but that's not true. There is always a public no arg default constructor. And you have to explicitly ask the Java C not to use it or change the access modifier explicitly by marking it as private. Attempting to enforce non-instantiability by making a class abstract does not work because abstr abstract class, it means uh, it's meant to be subclassed. And if you are meant to subclass a class, it means you have to be able to uh, call the superclass constructor and that's not what you want in terms of non-instantiability. An abstract method cannot, you cannot, uh, directly instantiate it but you instantiate it via the inheritance that's what the meaning of the abstraction or abstract class in java the class can be subclass and the subclass instantiated and the subclass in order to be instantiated it has to be able to call the superclass constructor it misleads the uh, the uh, the user into thinking the class was designed for inheritance right that's that's one of the main points of abstract classes you have to inherit them override the abstract method which means you kind of uh, able to instantiate that abstract class through inheritance a default constructor is generated only if a class contains no explicit constructor and that default class as i mentioned is a public which means it's accessible so you, if you don't want to do that, you have to, you want to enforce non-instantiability, you have to make that constructor private. So a class can be made non-instantiable by including a private constructor. So you either provide a private no arg constructor, which tells the Java C, hey, I don't want that public no arg constructor, make it private. Or uh, maybe you, if you provide a constructor that takes parameters, then Java C doesn't provide that no arg default constructor. And then you can mark your constructor, whatever it is, private, right? And then uh, uh, you prevent instantiation of your class. Now let's head to Eclipse and try to look at a few examples. Now the first example was uh, Java Lang Math, right? 
has a private constructor with a comment that hey we don't want anyone to instantiate this class another utility class is collections from java util uh, let's open it up private constructor right and then it says that suppresses default constructor ensuring non-instantiability and again this is a helper class which means uh, i mean there is it only has a static methods and it doesn't hold any state when a class doesn't hold any state it doesn't really need to have a constructor right but then if you don't provide it and mistakenly think that okay it's everything is static so i don't provide any constructor and nobody will instantiate but that doesn't prevent the users from instantiating it because if you don't provide it the const the java compiler will put a public no r constructor so you have to explicitly work against it and again the book suggested always add a comment in the source code why this constructor was private now the other thing is the other thing is that private constructors this java doc doesn't appear in the java doc if you use for example if you try to generate the java doc using a uh, java doc tool that comes with the jdk private things private methods private constructors the java doc doesn't really appear so if i uh, go to the java doc open the html version now you see uh, it doesn't have a uh, uh, basically constructor summary it has a field summary because these are public and a method summary and these are all public but there is no notion of uh, basically the constructors because the constructor are private so there is no point for the user to see any documentation but again it's better to provide a comment in the source code either in the form of an inline comment or a java doc in this case to as to why this constructor was private it's good for your own use case and it's also good for others who read the actual source code not the java documentation so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome back so let's have a quick uh, example of item 4 which is about uh, making the constructor private so that we enforce non-instantiability of the uh, of our class so i'm going to create another package item 4 in our effective java in-depth project and let's say uh, we uh, we are creating a class point right and this point is supposed to hold the uh, two integers int x and y and then uh, um so if we don't provide any uh, any constructor, any explicit constructor, the, the Java compiler will provide a no arc default constructor, right? And then uh, and then let's say we want to create a utility class. And utility class are very common when you create a Java project. Usually you have a class that is called util or utils, something in that nature, utils. And this uh, is supposed to have only a static, supposed to have only a static methods or a static field and this just provides a utility so public a static um, uh, create point for example uh, int x int y right or create cartesian point and then uh, um, and then you want to return something here so for example uh, uh, i can uh, uh, say uh, uh, point int x int y and i'm making the constructor package access so uh, this is a package private or default access right uh, which means nobody can call the constructor which is outside uh, this package so this dot x is x and this dot y is y all right so in the utils class we just return uh, uh, we just say the return type is point new point x and y this is typical java but as, as you as you see i completely forgot something that this utility class now is not following the best practice which is item 4 right item 4 says that if you have a utility class and everything is static the class is not supposed to have any state make sure make sure to make a uh, or uh, to have a a private constructor or basically don't forget to do that don't forget maybe instead of saying make sure don't forget because if you forget that this class at the moment can be instantiated because the java compiler adds a, a adds a public no arc default constructor so the java c adds a, a public no arg uh, default constructor right so the java c is already adding public uh, utils 
something like this with no code inside so something like this happens and we already um, know that the first line of the constructor is a call to the super class which is an object in this case and that call doesn't do anything and we can actually look at the um, we can actually look at the class file so if I go to the bean uh, utils class and open it up so you see the, this is the constructor so we have a static method but there is also a constructor which is public doesn't take any parameters and there is some code inside this constructor it just so it says load the reference this right that's the first thing that always gets loaded invoke a special means a uh, call a special method what it is what is it it is the init method right java lang object uh, invoke a special is used for the init method which is calling the constructor and just return that's it so this is the call to the super class constructor and we return right but then uh, what happens if we make uh, we mark the constructor uh, private and the best practice to, to always uh, add a comment uh, don't let anyone instantiate this class just add a comment in the source code so that uh, people that read your source code uh, understand why what's the reason behind this uh, making this private and if I look at the compilation again and now there is a private constructor and nobody can uh, uh, instantiate this class right because again uh, even though if you forget this uh, nothing terrible happens but people can instantiate this class but there is no point in doing that because this class doesn't have any states right so don't give the user's uh, false uh, indication of this class uh, can be uh, instantiated and hence it can hold a state because this class is not supposed to hold any state.